In this clip, uh, Tucker Carlson talks to an author called Julie Kelly, where they complained that the January 6 writers are languishing in a gulag. Every question about what actually happened on January 6, far from it. There's still many mysteries from that day. But one thing we know for certain is that the story they told you about it, a pat tale of good versus evil, an insurrection with no guns that took place at the U.S. Capitol. Uh, there, there were several people that had guns, some people had pepper sprays, other people used flagpoles as weapons, um, some people brought um, homemade bombs, so I mean, yeah, there were, there were weapons brought. Those were lies, and they were lies told for a very specific purpose, of course. The people in power wanted more power, and they got it on the basis of those lies. But in the process, many lives were destroyed. And some people are still in jail tonight, not having had their constitutionally guaranteed moment in front of a jury of their peers. They haven't even put on trial yet, and they're still rotting. That that's because there there is so many cases to go through that they've been starting with uh, people that had the least uh, charges to people with the. Most charges, like uh, the Proud Boys, who are getting charged with, like, sedition. Julie Kelly is the one journalist in this country who's been following us very closely. She wrote a book on it. January 6th, how Democrats used the Capitol protest to launch a war on terror against the political right, which is a perfect summation of what actually happened. Julie Kelly joins us now. Julie, thanks so much for coming on. Um, so it dawned on us, as, as these tapes made very clear, that the story we've been presented is an, is an absolute fabrication, it's a lie, it's a fraud, um, that people may still be in jail on the basis of these lies, and so we wanted to talk to you for an update on where those cases are tonight. So yes, there are, well, at least 100 men have been held under pretrial detention orders over the past two years. That means that a judge has denied them bail because the government, DOJ, successfully argued that that individual was a threat to the community. This includes, Tucker, people charged with nonviolent offenses like obstruction and conspiracy. So, of course, they, they don't have access to what could very easily be a exculpatory evidence contained in this video. But aside from the now, I think, around three dozen men who are held under pretrial detention orders, Tucker, believe it or not, there are some men going on 24, 25, 26 months denied bail, languishing in jail, including the D.C. Gulag, as the government continues to delay their trials. This all I, I find this hilarious that now right-wingers want to complain like how bad the uh, jail and prison system is now that uh, there is a bunch of quote-unquote political prisoners in uh, in jail. Now they speak out about it, but before that, they didn't care whatsoever how people got treated in jail. All has the imprimatur, by the way, of every judge on the D.C. District Court. I want to emphasize the real villains here are the federal judges in Washington, D.C., who right. have allowed the government to play every single game to keep this evidence out of the hands of defendants, violating their oath of office to protect the rights of defendants and their due process rights. So I really want to emphasize that. Um, but look, Tucker, there's a thousand criminal defendants right now. Half of them have pleaded guilty or been convicted at trial. Ooh, half of them have pleaded guilty or been convicted of trying to take over the government, basically. I mean, not not those charges, some, uh, you know, assaulting police officers, others for uh, sedition, others for damage to property and such like that. So, and the government just announced in two months ago, in January, that they were still uploading gl global, they call discovery, which means material related to the entire investigation. What they did was arrest people first, find the evidence later, and cover up what could um, potentially uh, exonerate these defendants. Well, n no, they used the videos that they posted, as well as... Uh, you know, media messages that, you know, people also posted saying that they went there and, you know, uh, family members and stuff turning in people who said they were at January 6th, 
That's why a lot of these people were arrested, because of the own videos that they made. If this were happening in any other country, the U.S. State Department would immediately acknowledge that these were violations of the most basic human rights, these are political prisoners, mm -hmm. and the U.S. government would condemn it. But it's happening here, and it's ignored, except by you. And I so appreciate your tireless reporting on this. Julie Kelly, thank you.